Hey, what's up guys, WRG here with another video. So today I'm gonna to be going over the seven principles of self-defense by Jeff Cooper. This was an amazing book. I think everyone should read this. You know, it's something I made my wife read. She recently started taking public transportation and I thought it'd be important for her to at least have these skills in order to survive a conflict should she ever encounter one. But if you don't have the time, I'm gonna go over some of the main topics in that book and a little back history to it. So this book was originally published back in 1989, actually the year I was born. and it's still relevant today. Nothing has really changed. Uh, human psychology is still very similar. And unfortunately, there are some people in the world that are malicious and willing to do harm to you. This book actually tells us that if you took uh, 100 random men and you know did a psychological evaluation or did some testing on them, you'd find that at least one of those 100 are likely to do physical harm to you should they feel like they wanted to for whatever reason. So. That's something to keep in mind. Even though 99% of the population is harmless, there is that 1% that is willing to do harm to you to get a personal gain or whatever it is that they want. So it's important to keep that in mind. Although it's not likely, you know, when that does happen to you, you want to be prepared. So that's why I think this book is so important. And yeah, I think everyone should take a chance to read it. It's not very long. It's actually written more like an essay than a book. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's more than 50 pages. I have the ebook, so I'm not really sure. But it's a very important book that I think everyone should take a look at. So the first principle is alertness. And this is something that I think everyone should develop. Pretty much want to have eyes on the back of your neck. Now, obviously, we're, it doesn't really encourage you to live like a paranoid life, but just a, a heightened state of alertness, you know, because certain things can happen and you could foresee these things and give yourself an advantage by seeing them in advance. Now, a lot of people choose not to live like that, and this book really isn't for them. This is, book, this is a book for people that believe in the ability to protect themselves and that want to foresee possible situations before they even occur so that they could avoid them. Now, of course, certain situations might be obvious, like a group of guys standing outside of, of your car or something like that. Someone keeps looking at you, and those kind of situations you definitely want to be on the lookout for. Anyone whose behavior really seems geared like towards you you know, should really be explained. You should think about it. Like, why are they paying so much attention to me? Is there something they might be thinking or plotting? And you definitely want to, you know, at least give that a chance to roll over in your mind. And if you can't find an appropriate explanation for why they may be paying extra attention to you, you should prepare yourself for a self-defense encounter, should it occur. Another important tip I like about this is not to give a stranger your hand. You know, giving someone, shaking someone's hand and giving that to them could give them a huge advantage over you, especially if they already have a plan in action and they want to take advantage of you. Be aware of anything around you that might be unusual or that might constitute further investigation. Now, the next step is decisiveness. Decisiveness is really key. If you freeze up or if you're not really sure what to do in a situation, that could be your, your opportunity to have succeeded. Now, some related concepts that I would suggest you guys check out related to this is OODA loop, which is a video I already did, and I suggest you guys check that out. It really helps within the decision process and helps you really speed that along so you could fast track that and go on to doing whatever you need to do. English common law has basically told us that if someone is trying to seriously injure you or kill you, you do have the right to defend yourself and impose serious injury or death to that person in order to prevent the attack from happening. Now, in other cases of rape, that's also another thing to consider. Uh, it is considered almost like deadly threat. You're allowed to defend yourself and do violence or whatever is necessary to stop that attack. So whenever you're under attack, it's important that you instantly make a decision and decide what you wanna do. Usually that decision should be to counterattack with aggression. Basically what you wanna do is evaluate the situation, make a decision and take action. Now the next key step is aggressiveness. Now a lot of police departments surprisingly actually use this book and this pamphlet, but they take out aggressiveness and ruthlessness just because maybe it doesn't make for good press to have an aggressive and ruthless police force. But it doesn't take away the fact that it's really important for survival situations and you do need to use these skills in order to survive. Now of course in defensive situations, we are not the persons that attack first and we have to grant our attacker the huge advantage of attacking us first. But once he has made that decision, we should overwhelm him with violence and aggression in order to defeat that attack. Basically what you wanna do is provide your attacker with an explosive counterattack. Um, you guys have seen several examples of this in nature where you see a small animal uh, scaring off a bigger animal. 
happens all the time. You could even see it with dogs and with wolves, with all kinds of situations. And it actually works. It's, it's in our nature to back away from someone that's overly overwhelming us with aggression. There have been several situations in which someone was outgunned or they were basically outpowered by other people or groups of people, but we're able to scare off that entire group just with the mere aggression and overwhelming force of violence imposing on them. And sadly, we've seen examples where this didn't happen, where there may have been 11 victims for one attacker. And those 11 victims could have easily overwhelmed that attacker, but chose not to for whatever reason. Maybe they, they were scared to upset the attacker. They were, they were scared to maybe aggravate him. But in actuality, they all became victims because they didn't group together and use a huge force of violence to overwhelm the attacker. Now the next principle is speed. This is a paramount principle to understand and the faster you could take action, the faster and less likelihood that your opponent doesn't have the opportunity to react to you. Speed is everything and speed is life in these situations. You know, an interesting quote that Napoleon said is that I may lose a battle, but I would never lose a minute. You know, speed is everything. Another quote that I've heard was uh, from the Old West that was taken from this book is that do unto others as they would do unto you, but do it first. Uh, hence the importance of speed. If you're attacked, you want to use speed to your greatest advantage. You want to do it instantly, you want to be sudden, and you want to use speed as your salvation. Okay, so the next principle is coolness. You definitely want to keep your cool in these situations. You don't want to panic and you don't want to overexert yourself so that you lose sight of what you're trying to accomplish. There have been several situations, unfortunately, where police have been in altercations and they weren't able to survive them because they missed their assailant. Maybe they took six shots at their the assailant and never was able to hit him and in turn received fire. Why did this happen? Now, police obviously are well-trained and they do have to pass certain uh, certain proficiencies in order to make the police force so it's not that this police maybe wasn't able to hit the target because he certainly had proved that before going out into the field but what happened was that he became overwhelmed and he lost his coolness during the situation and unfortunately it would cost him his life now of course the ability to remain cool under pressure comes easier for some people than others but it's important to work on it. I think everyone can achieve this. Jeff Cooper thinks that it's not an unattainable skill for anyone to have. And a lot of times just practice and repetition of things makes you more confident in them and you're able to perform them more smoothly and with a cooler head. You know, personally, I like to psychologically think I'm smarter than that person, I am faster, I am stronger, and give myself that psychological edge in order to defeat them. It's something that I developed personally when I was in boxing. You know, having that strong ego helps you defeat your opponent. If you feel like your opponent can defeat you, you know, they may go ahead and just defeat you. But if you have that psychological edge, it makes a huge difference and helps you defeat your opponent. Now, the sixth principle of self-defense is ruthlessness. If someone's willing to do harm to you, you want to come back with everything you got. You know, don't worry about their safety. Let them worry about their own. If they're trying to hurt you or inflict severe bodily injury or even kill you, you know, that's really not your problem. Your problem is survival and you need to worry about yourself. Now, of course, you don't want to go too far. The law doesn't allow you to take revenge on anyone. It just allows you to go up to the point that you're safe and that the assailant is no longer threatening to harm you. Now the same principle also applies in a shooting. If you're justified in shooting someone, then you're justified in killing them. It's just simply how the law works. Now of course, if you're not legally allowed to shoot someone or kill someone, then you shouldn't be doing so. You could always use non-lethal force, and it's always important to you have empty-handed skills. Now unfortunately, criminals are not really scared of the law. They're not scared of juries. They're not scared of going to jail. But what they do need to fear is a civilian that's able to defend themselves. And I think that's really what criminals need to learn as civilians become more independent and become less dependent on other sources. Now, every once in a while, a police might be there to be able to help you in an immediate situation, but that's not always the case. Oftentimes, you're left by yourself for however many minutes in order to defend yourself and do whatever you need to do to survive. So it's very important that you grow this independence and you're able to be self-sufficient in your own security. Now, this book also assumes that it's better to survive a situation and have to go to court than be dead and not ever have your chance to go to court. So basically, if you're really in these situations, you definitely want to do everything you can, overwhelm your attacker, and that might be your best chance of survival. So the seventh principle in this book is surprise. Now, surprise is something that you can learn to achieve and even though your attacker has the upper hand by attacking you first, you could surprise them with your reaction and the way you come back and counterattack them. 
you know, one of the examples that they use in this book is an Air Force pilot that had, I think, over a thousand uh, Air Force missions. I think over 350 something kills and confirmed kills. And basically the way he was able to do that, it, he said, was that 80 percent of his victims in the air didn't even know he was in the same sky as them. So he basically surprised them. They didn't even know he was around when he was able to take them out. Obviously, we don't have that same luxury when it comes to self-defense because they're attacking us first. But you can surprise them in the way you react. All right, guys, so those were the seven principles of self-defense. So if you guys have any questions or anything, please leave them down below in the comments. I'd love to engage in a conversation. This is a topic I'm really passionate about and I really enjoy. So leave them down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate the support. Like, share, subscribe. Really helps out the channel. WRG out.